The most important part of the pneumatic retinopexy procedure is careful evaluation and education of the patient. The eye evaluation should include indirect ophthalmoscopy with scleral depression to find the causative tears and also to look for other tears that might cause the operation to fail. Subconjunctival anesthesia is adequate for pneumatic retinopexy. The site of the gas injection and the site for any cryopexy needs to be anesthetized. We use a small amount of 2% xylocaine. If cryopexy is to be used, it should be done after the subconjunctival injection. Transconjunctival cryopexy is applied using visualization with the indirect ophthalmoscope. Use a step-down regulator to avoid high pressure that may blow a hole in the millipore filter. Place the filters on the regulator, then fill the syringe two or three times to minimize the dilution of gas with air. Place a 30-gauge needle on the syringe and eject the excess gas to the predetermined amount that you are going to use. Use a sterile drape for the procedure, like you would for injection of pharmaceuticals. After the lid speculum is placed, use a 5 or 10 percent solution and apply it directly to the injection site and the paracentesis site. Use a 27 or 30 gauge needle and aspirate 2 tenths of a milliliter of aqueous. The needle should be placed over the iris to avoid damage to the lens. I prefer a passive paracentesis as explained in the text. Rotate the patient's head away from the injection site so that the injection will be directed toward the center of the eye and also toward the center of the earth. Insert the needle four millimeters behind the limbus. The needle should go in more than halfway and then be retracted so that about seven or eight millimeters is outside the eye. This can be measured with a caliper. A smooth, even injection is then carried out in order to get a single bubble. After the injection, rotate the eye so that the bubble is away from the injection site. Have the patient assume a prone position after the injection. This pushes the subretinal fluid away from the macula. If the tear is large, you can force some of the subretinal fluid back into the vitreous. Check the pressure and examine the eye to be sure the central retinal artery is patent and that there is a single bubble. We also re-instruct the patient about positioning. 